I'll be speaking briefly on the power of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. It's a common knowledge here. It's spoken and said by everyone. Ignorance is no excuse in law. When the law of life is broken, we become victims of death. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are his people, but they are suffering because they don't know what they need to know to free themselves from their suffering. I want to believe that many Christians are grounded because they take God for granted. When you take God for granted, you get grounded. Anyone you show favor to that does not know how to respond, you are constrained from doing any further favor to him. It's natural. Thank you is what qualifies you for the next act of favor. Many people have had great times sometimes past, but the great times have turned into gloomy days because they did not acknowledge the source of the great times. So, the one behind it withdraws and turns his back. May God not turn his back on anyone here. I was privileged to start pastoring from the scratch. I used to say humorously that we had three and a half members. One was not decided. You may see him today and not see him tomorrow. But for anyone who is close to the history of this church, you know, we are addicted to Thanksgiving. It's an addiction. Just like uh, alcoholics are addicted to wine and smokers to cigarettes. If you travel any time on long flight and you find an addicted smoker, it's very uncomfortable throughout the flight. As soon as you jump out, he puts almost two cigarettes in his mouth at the same time because of his addiction. This flight, no smoking. He said, wow. Before the plane starts, he starts asking, how long is this flight? He said, three and a half hours. He won't become, come. he will ask somebody else, how much? Because for me to do without cigarette for four hours, is cancerous. <laughs> he can't understand it. He's addicted to it. The same way when you become addicted to thanksgiving, destiny opens up to you on its own accord. He says, a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his holy name because he's the most high God. To tell of his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. And you know what it means when you get, when you begin to do good things. The Bible said, and if you be follower of that which is good, who is it that will hurt you? So thanksgiving envelopes you and cocoons you in God. You are unreachable, you are un unaccessible, you are enveloped. Divine presence covers you when you are a thanksgiver. God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your materials. The only one thing God cannot give to himself is thank you. Hello? Have you ever seen anybody who say thank me? Thank me. Now the only thing God can do for himself is to praise himself. That's why he's always around those who praise him, those who give him thanks all of the time. And nothing is more valuable than divine presence in the race of life. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? I'm talking about the power of thanksgiving. It's not just a thing that happens when you feel it's a debt you owe that must be paid. Or the source of supplies is caught. So thanksgiving and praise qualifies you to carry divine presence. And divine presence is all you need to have a most triumphant ride in life. Romans 8.31 If God be for us, who can be against us? Psalm 22 and verse 3 he inhabited the praises of his people. God won't be with you because you are crying. He will be with you because you are praising him. So when you give in to praise, you qualify for divine presence. 
And when you carry divine presence, it makes all the difference. It makes what? All the difference. Divine presence makes all the difference. That wonderful daughter of Abraham was speaking here in, his, in her testimony. He said, Holy Spirit, go with me. And Holy Spirit went with her. He went to the chairman. Holy Spirit, go with me. And Holy Spirit went with her. And when God goes with you, everything goes great for you. May God go with you from today. <laughs> Prayer, fasting, waitings, givings, none of them qualifies you for divine presence. Your prayer is giving God an extra job to do. He has to answer it. Your giving is to open up the place of God in your direction. There is nothing God is benefiting from you and me except the thank you and the bless you and the praise you, Lord. When we give, it is out of what he gave us that we have given him. So there is nothing serious about it. What you don't have, you can't give. When you pray, you are giving him extra duty, extra function, extra responsibility. He must answer you. But when you praise him, you attract him. How many want to keep on attracting God here? When you praise him, you attract him. And when you attract him, everything goes attractive for you. God's presence makes all the difference. And I pray today that a time will never come in our lives when we'll assume that the great happiness in our life is by our hands. May such time never come. May such time never come. May such time never come. The truth is this, your degree of gratitude is what defines the greatness of your journey. Gratitude is what determines your ultimate altitude in life. The more grateful you are, the more colorful your destiny becomes. The more grateful you are, the more colorful your destiny becomes. Show me an addicted thanksgiver and I show you one whose life will never go empty. The more addicted you are to thanksgiving, the fuller your thanks become day in, day out. None of your thanks, your containers can be empty when you are full of thanks. The fuller your thanks becomes with your thanksgiving. I want to commend you to God, therefore, this morning. It's a worthy addiction to be grateful to God. It's a worthy addiction to be grateful to God. There is the story of Herodias' daughter in Mark chapter 6 and verse 21 to 26. On the bad day of Herod, Herodias' daughter came on, on the stage and danced and danced and pleased Herod and those that sat with her, with him. And Herod said, who is that? Come on here. Ask me anything to the half of my kingdom. It is yours. Favor landed on her because she pleased the king. And nothing pleases God as earlier stated than your thanksgiving and praise. For that is the only thing he cannot do for himself. The Bible said praise is comely unto God. That is what attracts him most in our life. The reason we are stranded is because we are addicted to complaints and murmurings. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10, they that murmured in the wilderness, they were destroyed by the destroyer. Complaints may look logical, but thanksgiving... Is the only lawful way to go forward. Thanksgiving is the only lawful way to go forward in your pursuit. May I say this therefore? When you are committed to thanksgiving, you attract unsolicited favor. That lady wasn't dancing to get any favor. She was only doing her thing. And the thing she was doing brought favor into her life. The thing she was doing, dancing to the pleasure of the king, brought favor to her. Imagine what comes your way when you dance to please the king of kings. It is unspeakable favor. 
May you walk in the realm of unspeakable favor the remaining days of your life. May you walk in the realm of unspeakable favor the remaining days of your life. People pray fervently, but they don't give thanks fervently. When it's time to pray, everybody's out. When it's time to give thanks, it looks just like what we must do, but we can't tell why we are doing it. I'm saying this, thanksgiving is far more potent than prayers. When you pray, God answers you if he hears. It's not all prayers that he hears. He said when we pray according to his will, he hears us. But when you give thanks and praise him, he comes down. Between hearing you and coming down, which one is more powerful? When God comes down, every Pharaoh must bow out. When God came down to Egypt, Pharaoh bowed in the sea. When you pray, he answers you if he hears you. But when you praise him, he comes down to see to the operation by himself. And if God be for us, who can be against us? That should give you an idea of how powerful the force of thanksgiving is in the race of life. God comes down and envelopes you. He cocoons you. He, he puts you inside himself. So arrows of the wicked can touch you. Now, when you pray, he answers you if he hears you. So prayer has technicalities. You pray according to the will of God. So you can pray amiss. But interestingly, is the fact that you can't praise God amiss. You praise him anyhow. He takes it in any language. He takes it in any form. You don't need to quote any scripture to praise God acceptably. Just praise him from the depth of your heart. He said, is any happy with me and what I'm doing? Let him sing. So you can pray amiss, but you can't praise amiss. That makes it an open check for every smart believer. Come and say open check. So you can praise your way into fortune. You can praise your way into glory. You can praise your way into beauty. There was a man called David. Listen to this and I'm, I'll be looking at. This man called David praised his way into the heart of God. You remember the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. Now, in Psalm 119 and verse 164, David was giving thanks and praise seven times a day. How many times? And he was praying only three times. Psalm 55 and verse 17. In the morning, at noon, and in the night will I cry. So he was praying three times a day. And he was praising God seven times a day. So he praised his way into the heart of God. He became a man after God's own heart. And you see how much mark he made on earth. 1996, I was privileged to be invited to Israel. I couldn't make it, but they were having a celebration that set me thinking. 3,000th year that David named Jerusalem the city of David. They were celebrating 3,000th year anniversary of a mortal man. He was so lost in God that his name became as eternal as God's name. You can praise your way into the heart of God. 3,000th year that somebody did something was being remembered. 3,000 years. 3,000 years. If you must be remembered after your tenure on earth is over, you must know how to get lost in God. And the way to get lost in God is to give him thanks for his acts and praise for his personality. We thank him for what he's done. We praise him for who he is. If God still means anything to you, then praise is the only way to show it. You praise him for who he is. You give him thanks for what he's done. And when you live with that attitude, destiny opens to you in a grand style. I tell you something. There is no spiritual force that is more potent than the force of thanksgiving. 
Jesus took five loaves and two pieces of bread. And there were 5,000 men minus women and children. And you agree with me, women are always more in every crusade. Amen. And children without number. And Jesus took five loaves and two fishes, lifted up his hands and gave thanks. Heavens opened. The canteen in heaven resumed automatic service. And baskets of bread began to arrive. There was no basket where they prayed. So if there was any basket anywhere, it came from somewhere. Baskets came from source, landed on the earth. And people sat down in 50, 50, 50 groups. And all of them were fed. And they gathered 12 baskets over and above all that have eaten. And they took as much as they would. Jesus gave thanks and miracles erupt. Thanksgiving is a very fertile platform for the eruption of signs and wonders. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Nothing goes down with a thanksgiver. Everything rises in the hands of a thanksgiver. Thanksgiving is a catalyst that boosts every destiny. We praised this church. We praised God. And this church began to blow and began to move and began to explode and began to erupt. And it's still erupting up till now. If God's hand must not stop and be withdrawn from your life, thanksgiving is a force you must employ. You remember that in John chapter 6? And beginning from verse 5 to 11, Jesus gave thanks and the food multiplied. In John chapter 11, Jesus got to where Lazarus was buried after four days. How many days? After four, he was thoroughly dead, he was properly dead. And Jesus lifted up his hands and gave thanks. And as he gave thanks, death was converted to life. No matter what has died in your life. When you give thanks from the depth of your heart, they shall come back to life. Yeah. Now, this gives us an idea of what thanksgiving is all about. It's not just an issue of pausing in prayers. It's not what you do because uh, you are told you must do it. It's what you know why you are doing it. When you know why you are doing it, then you begin to tap into the blessings of it. Let me close this way. It's very important for you to know that nothing grows in your hand without thanksgiving. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield that increase. How many want to see increases in their lives? In your business, in your career? The only way to see increase is to know the mystery of thanksgiving and praise. Nothing rises Without your praise and thanksgiving rising up to God, nothing rises. I can tell you that from experience. I know a bit of it. I know how it works. And this church knows how it works. Many people here know how it works. That praising God makes all the difference. Returning thanks to him makes all the difference. It is my prayer that no one here will be granted anymore. It's my prayer that no one here will be granted anymore. If you cannot see anything he has done, then you are not ready for the next things you desire. So until you are able to see what he has done, you are not qualified to see the next things that you desire. God does things every day. I slept And I awoke because the Lord sustained me. And what is the most valuable asset you have? Your life. What is it? Everything about you. Nothing compares in value with your life. So the one sustaining that life is worthy of thanks. The psalmist said in Psalm 150, the last verse, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. How many? Everything that has breath. Not everything that has a car, not everything that has a house, not everything that has a great job, has a great position. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As a little kid in school, one evening we were having sports. And then a boy threw a javelin on the field. And it struck on the left side of a little boy. And stayed there as if it was on the ground. By the time this javelin was pulled out, blood gushed out like a fountain. Because the heart had been pierced. This boy was just playing like any other boy, like any of us. That was it. I still remember the name Samuel Joshua. That was the end of Samuel Joshua. He didn't do nothing to be off. He was just on the field like everybody else was on the field. Why not you? Why not me? God. I remember while I was in primary two, I saw the first death practically in my life. Because I was very tall. My seat was in front. And this boy was behind me. And we had a recess. And everybody left out for the recess. We came back, but his hand, his head was still on the desk. So when one little puppy was trying to tap him, the teacher said, no, 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 no. Because in our days, beating was part of the profession of the teacher. The teacher tiptoed to the place. But to avoid any possible shock, the teacher wanted to wake him up before giving him a very proper beating. Touched him, no motion. Moved him, no motion. Beat him, no motion. The teacher's cane fell in her hand. That was the end of that boy. He did nothing. So you are not alive by chance. The one who kept you on your feet is worthy of appreciation. It's worthy of honor. We are not saying this to rejoice over those issues, but to make, to prove one point. I had no defense just like he had no defense. So when death came to that classroom, he passed my desk and went to his desk. How? I can't tell. Many of us have stories to tell that way. People that are dear to you, that are close to you, people you grew up together who did nothing, but are no longer alive. And now somebody has life, is crying because he has no dress. Somebody had dress, but he has no life. We are so bothered about many other things. That's why Thanksgiving becomes an uphill task for us. Whatever force kept you on your feet till day requires your attention in thanksgiving and praise. And I can tell you something. It is not the devil who kept you alive. It is God who kept you alive. <laughs> Satan doesn't keep anybody alive. He is called the thief. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if you are alive, God has put you on your feet. Jesus made it possible. And what do you do? You respond with thanksgiving. You respond with, I said to God one day, I said, even if you don't answer any more prayer till I die, you have tried. Many years ago. That if nothing still happens, to, I mean, and I've said that now more than 15 years ago, that if nothing extra happens to my life, I will still be following you till I die. Now you, you understand what I'm talking about. Until you resign yourself fully to God, the journey is always rough. May I say this? You owe God thanks. It's a debt you must pay day in, day out. The thanksgiving we hold here once every month is to stimulate your attitude of thanksgiving to God. This month, no, nothing to thank God for. So next month, there won't be anything to thank God for. Every month you must package enough reason. Your children went to school every day and returned. You went to work every day, you return. On the street you pass, people die almost every day. Why not you? God has kept you. This is important. That's what made David won the heart of God. May more Davids arise in this service this morning. Yeah. Oh, we constantly find a reason to give God thanks. In closing, in case you are in chains, like Paul and Silas, 
awaiting your execution as their case was. In Acts chapter 16, the Bible said in verse 25, at the midnight of their ordeal, they switched over to praise and heavens came down. Thanksgiving and praise is a weapon of deliverance. A weapon of deliverance. And you can understand that. When evil spirit came on Saul and David played the instrument, evil spirit departed from him and he was refreshed. When you are sold out to a life of thanksgiving and praise, evil spirit can't hold you to ransom. You are delivered by the power of God and divine presence. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises aloud. The prisoners mocked them, but God loosed them. People may mock you as you praise him. We can't even tell what he's praising God for. But as they mock you, God steps in to lose you. You shall not remain in chains anymore. I think with this we have a bit of insight. A reminder, an inspiration this morning that God is worthy of all thanks, worthy of all praise. I can tell when this ministry began, my salary was 300 naira. My wife was 140 naira according to what God made available. But there was no day we prayed for food. Nothing is enough except God's hand is there. Visitors kept coming in and going out. But there was no one day we went to the next house to ask for something extra to make comfortable the guests. Most of the things that are finished in your house, you finish them yourself. It is your ingratitude that finished those things. And when you switch over to gratitude, you will not know emptiness anymore. <laughs> Nothing goes empty when your thanks unto God are really full. Thanksgiving will terminate every emptiness in your life. May I say this? The food on your table today, he put it there. The job in your hand today, he gave it to you. Smarter people than you don't have the job that you have. God gave it to you. The life that made it possible for you to do that job, he offered it to you. So everything about you is a gift. What role did you play to be born? Hello? Say with me, God. That's important. That's the way up. The cheapest way off. The cheapest way off is to recognize that God is the reason you and I are alive. God is the reason for the results that we see. God is the reason for the blessings that we enjoy. God is the reason for the breath in our nostrils. God is the reason for the food on our table. God is the reason for the peace in our family. God is the reason for everything that people applaud us for. God is the reason for it. We have great leaders in our nation here today. One day Nebuchadnezzar stood in his palace and said, This great kingdom which my hand has built. God said, Your hand built it. You will crawl on that hand. Because he gave not glory to God. God made him to crawl on those hands for seven years. One king in Acts chapter 12 made an oration to contest the place of the Almighty. And as he spoke... They have organized the applaud. The people said with one voice, the voice of a God and not of a man. And an angel of the Lord went forth and smote him and worms ate him up on his throne. God reacts very violently to people who appropriate his glory to themselves. People clap for you. You are the best in that interview. Wonderful. Who made you to be the best? You got the job that you are not. You are least qualified for. Who gave you that job? People you should never have met in your life. They call you on phone to do you a favor. Who is the reason for that? I am sure the reason many Christians are stranded and grounded today is that they appropriate every favor, every resort, every beauty, every glory, at least some of it to themselves. At least some of it to themselves. You see, I knew what I did before I got that thing. 
Well, thank God for what he did, but what I did was the reason why it happened. And so everything stops happening. May that never be your experience. Some of the testimonies you share here made me to shed tears. One of the reasons I shed tears is that I hope this individual will continue to acknowledge that this is God that did it. That it's not him and it's not his pastor. It's not his church. That it is God. And when that happens, God never stops. You become a living wonder when you are lost in praise and thanksgiving. That is God. That's what he does. And he hasn't changed. He will not change. He has not changed and he will never change. He has not changed and he will never change. I don't know what to expect during this week. But I know this week will be a week of amazement. I know that this week will be a week of joy and rejoicing. I know that no evil report will come your way this week. I know that this week will be a week of glory and honor for you. Evil will not answer in your tabernacle. You will not hear evil report from your children who are not around. Every member of your family who has traveled, they shall return safely. I pray that having come into this tabernacle for worship today, all through this week, through a genuine attitude of praise, God, my God, shall tabernacle with you. And with his presence, no accident on your way. Every arrow of the enemy targeted at you shall return back to the sender. Every arrow of evil targeted at your children shall return back to the sender. You heard the testimonies of others today. By the time you are returning next Sunday, you have a testimony in your hand. The Bible said, have respect to the covenant of law for the habitations of the darkness of the earth is full of the habitations of cruelty. As we come together for our covenant day of protection, I pray that God shall set a seal of security over everyone's life. You shall not see evil anymore. Your children's children shall no more see evil in their lives. Every mark that the enemy has put on anyone's life to make a plea of him or her. As we gather in this coming Sunday service, such marks shall be swept off in the name of Jesus Christ. And all through this month, in all of our churches worldwide, we are celebrating the efficacy of the word of God. And God said, we should keep saying and saying, the word works. The word works. And I pray that this month of June, the word of God will work for you. Whatever represents a need in your life, the word of God will produce a direct answer for it. Go in peace.